Then he comes back with this. Uh, hang on. When you say, oh, because I said it was par for the course. He says, when you say it's par for the course because I didn't send you a birthday message, do you ever remember sending me a Christmas card or the, over the last 10 years? I certainly don't hold it against you or Jim, which is my other brother. But I guess we only remember what we want to remember. <laughs> I don't send anybody Christmas cards. <laughs> hey, if you want to send me a Christmas card, go ahead. I believe it's a pagan holiday anyway. I don't send anybody Christmas cards. They took Jesus out of Christmas a long time ago. <clears throat> And so I just responded with this. It's not like you to forget or just not care. I don't hold it against you. I know you have a very busy life. I love you and appreciate you. I don't send anyone Christmas cards. <laughs> just not my thing. Uh... I told him that I believe that he was blessed. Now, whether he is or not, that's between him and the Lord. But in some areas, I would say he's a very blessed man. Some areas, I'd say he's not. But So he, I told him he was blessed, and he said, Yes, I'm blessed in many ways, as you are. And I wish we could be closer as well, because I said I wish we could be closer. But listen, folks, is he assuming that I don't think I'm blessed by saying, yes, I am blessed in many ways as you are? Did I need to be reminded that I'm blessed? See, that's coming from a pride. That's coming from pride. He thinks I'm thinking he's blessed and I envy him. See, that's pride. When people think you envy them, that's pride. I didn't need him to tell me that I'm blessed. I know I'm blessed. Very blessed. So blessed. One of the most blessed. <laughs> I don't envy him. I feel bad for him. Well, then I sent him a few other scriptures. And I'm only sharing this with you folks because this is my experience. This is my personal life. And I'm trying to help you understand how we apply the truth to our life. And I know there's others out there going through the same thing with their own siblings, their own friends and family, and even people right in the church. Uh, I, I texted him, Forgiveness goes a long way. Requires God's love. And the scripture I sent him is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Listen to what he says here. This is really getting into the meat of the message that I wanted to share with you today. He says, Joseph, I, told, I, I hold nothing against you, talking about our past, childhood, whatever. I just set my boundaries. Now listen to this, folks. Joseph, I hold nothing against you, I just set my boundaries because I feel that you judge me and many others every time we try to communicate. I do not enjoy our conversations. Listen, because 90% of the conversation is you preaching and throwing out scriptures. There's no relationship in that. So what he's saying is 90% of our conversation is scriptures and preaching. Well, when you're a preacher, that's what you do is you preach. Jesus, uh, Paul, uh, Peter said, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. See, he wants to have a, a, a natural, on a natural level, uh, conversation with his brother 
when his brother is a spiritual man. It's difficult to have to stay on that level for me, to stay on the level of the physical realm. When you're so in love with Jesus Christ, you just you can't help but let him out. Amen. You just got to let that light shine. Well, folks, you're going to be persecuted, you're going to be hated. So do you hear what he's saying? He sets his boundaries because 90% of the time I'm sharing the word of God. Sharing scriptures. And I'll assure you they're not scriptures to tear down. I'm sharing scriptures to edify. But he doesn't want to hear scriptures. All you have to do is go to his church website and listen to the messages he hears. And you can see why he doesn't want to hear the scriptures. Because they've replaced the scriptures with nonsense today. With with entertainment. He goes to one of these big mega churches and in uh, Tucson or in um, yeah Tucson Arizona then he says this is what I feel whether you agree with that or not that's up to you so I just responded with thanks for the confirmation I thought it was me shows me where you're at then he throws this out happy birthday Joseph with an explanation point <laughs> Well, better late than never, I guess. <laughs> Thank you for helping me understand it's not me that has the problem. Because I thought it was me. I thought it was something I was doing wrong. Um, so, anyway, there's some more things I typed here to encourage him. Trying to help him understand that Allah is not a name for Jehovah. Never was, never would be. Allah in the original Hebrew is the word curse. It's the curse that goes out over all the earth. God is not a curse. So folks, do you see that part of the scripture? When all men shall separate you from their company, they set boundaries. I hope somebody out there is getting something to encourage you in your walk with the Lord. Because if, if you're not experiencing what I'm reading to you, what I'm sharing with you, you, you can't be walking with Jesus. You know, Jesus said, beware when all men speak well of you. Amen? Yeah. I had the Lord's give me a scripture the other day so blessed me I was over at the store and I was had one thing in my hand you know usually when you have one thing in your hand and someone has a big carriage full of stuff usually they'll say go ahead go ahead of me right well this one guy had so much stuff in his carriage and he saw that I was holding one thing in my hand and so he he looked over at me and kind of wagged his head at me you know didn't didn't really seem to care and so I got in a different line well on the way out I was in front of him and he was behind me and he looked at me strange like how'd you get in front of me and the scripture came to me the last shall be first Amen? Oh, yeah. Praise God. I love it when Jesus gives us a, a verse of Scripture just when we need it. Amen? He knows what we need. I remember another time where when I was in Florida and I didn't have a place to stay when I first got to Florida. and Anyway... Uh, almost thought I was going to have to spend the night outdoors under the stars or at least in my car that night and I'm walking along in the park and I see these birds and the Lord speaks to me and he says are you not better than they? <laughs> aren't you better than they? Within within three, within the next couple of hours I was in contact with somebody 
um, they didn't give me a plate or they didn't provide a place to stay, but I met with them at, at Panera Bread. And while we were sitting there, we prayed together. And um, while we were praying, I got a phone call. And, um, or got a text, excuse me, got a text saying that there was money in my account. Well, I've got a few online websites that make a little bit of money. And and so I received a uh, an order from a customer that gave me enough money to get a place to stay. Oh, I know what it was. No, I thought I thought it was for money from a. Uh, 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 no, it wasn't. It was. Uh, it was Brother Thomas in Norway. Sending me some support. That's what it was, and he sent me just enough money for me to get a, a down deposit on a place to stay and the first month's rent. I didn't even ask him. While we were praying. The answer came. The money came. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you not better than they? Consider the birds of the air. Are you not better than they? Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. You know, I wonder how many people are really living this thing today. Walking by faith and not by sight. A lot of folks today have religion. They're religious. But they don't know Jesus. They don't walk with the Lord by faith. They don't hear his voice. They don't hear the scriptures speaking to them. The Lord's speaking in this hour. If we have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen? Amen. In fact, I, I think it's actually not a good thing in the sense that he had to tell me. He had to, he had to remind me that I was of more worth than a bird. Uh, I didn't think my faith was so small. But, you know, it is what it is. We are where we are. And then we be... You know, foolish to disagree with the Lord and say, oh, well, Lord, I don't need you to tell me that. No, I, the Lord knew I needed to hear that and I needed to be encouraged. But I grew from it. You won't find me in a park kicking a can or wondering how I'm going to, where I'm going to stay ever again. That'll never happen again. Because anytime I come into that situation, I, if anything, I'll be reminded of what the Lord had said to me. But hopefully I'd be stronger and more mature that I wouldn't even question it. My mind would be, Lord, where are we staying tonight? Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus didn't have a place to lay his head. And yet most professing Christians today don't know what they would do if they didn't have a house, a car, a job. Most of God's people today don't even know what it is to walk by faith. In fact, my little brother, the one I was just reading his text to you, when he first got saved, I shared my testimony with him, one of my many testimonies where God has met me by faith on my journey and he looked at me and he said he says Joe you got to share that with the church church needs to hear that yeah where he where is he today where is he today won't even talk to his brother something changed but it wasn't me Somebody went somewhere, but they didn't get closer to Jesus. Because if he can't handle 90% of his brother talking 